Welcome everyone to today's lesson or class or live podcast recording, whatever you want to call this. this these calls have evolved into a live podcast recording, which is fantastic because you all ask the best questions. And today we're going to be covering the strategies around radiance. First off, let's ask the question, what is radiance to you? Now, when you listen to the podcast, you know that I ask every single guest that I interview, they're experts in their own rights and share their information and value and technologies with you to help your lives be better. And I always love to ask the question, what is radiance to you? Now, let me know what is radiance to you. And just think about this for a second. Close your eyes and envision someone who you've connected with through conversation, you met in real life, and it didn't matter how old they were. They could have been 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, but there was just something about them that was magnetic. And you just felt so good being in their energy, being around them. Think about an individual who you've experienced. And in my mind, I'm thinking about just tons of clients that I've supported since 2011 on their skin and rejuvenation journey. And they had these visible signs of aging, like pigmentation and redness and fine lines, wrinkles. But there was just something about them that there was this softness to them. There was a gentleness, but there was also a very strong clarity to them in the way that they communicate and just how present they were. They, they weren't distracted by their phone. They weren't distracted by their smartwatch pinging them all the time. This is who I think about when I think about what is radiance. What does that look like? And the concept of radiance, I've spent probably about 10 years deconstructing this, just observing so many different clients I've supported on their skin and rejuvenation journey, both online and in the clinic. And if you want to see me in the clinic, there is uh, an option for that. You can book that on my website, theschoolofradiance.com. You can also email me directly, info at theschoolofradiance.com. And, you know, I can still connect and, and sense this radiance in individuals, both online and, and in person. And this gentleness and the softness, we sometimes think that to be powerful and to be strong, we have to be loud and we have to be overly enthusiastic with our facial expressions and our gestures. We have to be the loudest person in the room, but there's actually a power to being the quiet observer. And this is what I've spent a long time doing. What are the different aspects that make someone appear more beautiful, and also experience slower aging? What are they doing in their lives? And we're going to step by step deconstruct what this is. But I first wanted to set the stage for having you visualize and feel what it's like to connect with someone who's radiant. Now, how would you like to feel that and provide that to others, whether you're a parent whether you're, you are a husband or a wife, whether you're a daughter, a sister, a brother, a cousin, people who you connect with in your daily living, both personally and professionally, how would you like to be able to leave that impression? That impression of a very strong and potent softness and gentleness. In the way that I operate, I love to leave a positive lasting impression which, with whoever I connect with, whether it's going to the bank and chatting with the teller today or going to the grocery store or the restaurant server, just always leaving kindness everywhere I go and just adding some type of positivity. One of my good friends, Dave Asprey, he's actually really good at this. Uh, in Online, he's you know very... Uh, his branding is that of a renegade or a disruptor, but in real life, someone like him, he just loves to make everybody laugh. He loves to make sure everyone's having a good time and it's just fun in his approach. And it's great to be around people like that because they're entertaining, but you also just feel at ease and you're having a great time. There's another layer here, which is etiquette and to have good etiquette 
means that those who you are at a dinner party with or some type of function or event, you are making sure that everyone's feeling comfortable. You're not saying things that are going to, you know, rock the boat and things like that and get everybody in their high cortisol state and get their adrenals firing. We don't want to be doing that in conversations because that's going to add to division. And that's really the last thing that we want. We want to be coming together, pooling our resources and our different skills and adding things to one another, one another's lives. So that's really, you know, some of the background on radiance, but then there's also the etiquette layer too. How do you communicate in a really beautiful, soft, feminine, yet strong way for the ladies? And then for the men, how do we do this in more of like that leadership role, that leadership capacity, that trustworthiness, that strength? Radiance can definitely be achieved and maintained for both the men and women out there. It's not just for ladies. And sometimes we think, oh, to have radiant skin is to have clear skin and smooth skin and glassy skin and an even skin tone and, you know, not experiencing things like melasma or you're waking up and you're in your 40s and you're going through perimenopause or menopause or postmenopause. You're like, why is my skin changing all of a sudden? You know, these are things that the body goes through, especially during those pivotal times for women with hormone changes where the estrogen starts to drop and then so does the elastin and collagen in the skin. So if you're looking at yourself, you're thinking, ah, you know, I feel like pretty good on the inside, but it's, it's just that external stuff I'm starting to notice. Of course, I can help you with that. And, but then there's also the other layer is energy. We're not going to have the energy to show up and have great conversations and, and have great etiquette in our toolkit. We're going to talk a little bit more about that. My in and out conversation strategy is what I like to call it. When I have to connect with people, I don't really want to connect with, but you got to be polite and do your etiquette thing and leave a positive lasting impression and have the other party be none the wiser that really you just wanted to get in and out of that conversation or situation. And this is actually a really good skill set to cultivate because it's going to protect your energy. And for those of you tuning in, a lot of you listening, and I just met with Sarah. Hey, Sarah, great to have you here. We're really caring people. That's why you're here on the show. You're going to learn about health stuff. You're going to learn about having great, healthy skin. You're going to learn about slowing aging, but you're also going to learn about how to show up. And we are going to be better able to show up when we actually feel more confident and we're not self-conscious, right? Say we've put our makeup on that AM and then, you know, we have to do stuff and makeup starts to slide off and you didn't have time for touch up and you got to go somewhere and make a good impression. Well, number one, if you use really great makeup, that makeup's going to last all day. And I teach on, you know, what my makeup recommendations are and then how to apply that in my seasonal skin tutorials in lesson one. And if you haven't yet joined that, definitely join that. That's where I teach you exactly how to use your products. But the confidence thing is really important for us to be able to show up in this beautiful radiant energy. And the confidence comes from looking fantastic, but it also comes from feeling fantastic and having the energy to do so. Think about this for a second. If you are sometimes in that hermit mode and you don't really want to get out, you don't really want to do things, you just want to go home and take a nap on your PEMF mat, think about that. Do you avoid connections? Do you avoid conversation? Do you avoid social events? This actually goes into your attachment style. And there's a spectrum of attachment styles. And for those of us who are pretty empathic and can pick up on energies, we might think, I, I don't really want to, you know, engage and go to that thing. I just want to go home and take a nap. There's, there's also that running in the background in your operating system, your attachment style. But then there's also the energy component. You need to have good energy and good energy encompasses both the physical and the non-physical side of things too, to truly show up and be radiant. If you desire to have radiant skin, if you desire to have more energy, we need to think about ourselves and ourselves. 
So thinking about ourselves, that's going to include the personal work. So understanding what your personality archetype is, understanding your attachment style, and then move towards becoming a more grounded and mature personality archetype, and then also becoming a more securely attached individual and you loving yourself. That's the component of ourselves and improving ourselves. The more we know about ourselves and our operating systems that actually get established through early childhood, the more that we can move through things that might be getting in the way of us showing up. And just that one example of being a, an avoidant attachment style can be one of the barriers that you might not have thought about in regards to you living the life that you know you're here to do and be of service. And, you know, I'm, I'm not about connecting with people who are just in it for the money. I'm about connecting and supporting people who are here to be of service. And the way we're going to do that is through being our most radiant, confident, and kindest, brightest version. That's how we leave a positive impact in the world. So tuning in here isn't just about looking pretty. It's about feeling pretty and feeling beautiful and then giving off that radiance. Now, when it comes to ourselves, then there's other things to think about. Say, for example, if you're dealing with melasma, there's a hormone component, but there's also a detoxification component too. And the less inflamed we are, the less our oxidative stress is filling up this toxic bucket with which I wrote a research paper on explaining exactly what oxidative stress is. When you get exposed to a toxin in your air, water, lighting, electromagnetics, different foods that might not be right for you, and also pathogens, these can trigger what's called a cell danger response. And it leads to downstream inflammation. It fills up that toxic bucket and then, oops, whether it's environmental or emotional, it tips over and then you get the manifestation or the display of accelerated aging and skin issues like acne, for example, or melasma or dry skin or red skin or irritated skin or irritation to the scalp, hair loss and shifts in your body composition, maybe being a little bit too puffy. Hey, Delilah, great to see you. And hello, Elizabeth as well, and Deborah. Great to see you all. Carrie, Lisa, Sarah, Sylvia, Tamara, Teresa, Wendy, and many more. And those of you listening to this after the fact. So when it comes to our cells, we need to think about oxidative stress. Because before I started my detoxification, detoxing, clearing out parasites, yeast, fungi, mold, heavy metals, all sorts of different things like that, I didn't actually know how good I could feel. And when I did my first parasite cleanse, which was about two years ago, I didn't know how good I could feel. My hair, skin, and nails, the, the growth of my hair and nails and the quality of my nails shifted dramatically as well as a pretty noticeable drop in breakouts. And if I did get a breakout, I'd have it for like two days. And then that redness afterwards, which we call post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, that was fading in about two, three days. That's a good sign that your body is filtering things out appropriately. But if you're noticing these things on your skin, they're telling you internally that something is a little bit off and there's some work to do around that. So focusing first on purification, I love to approach being our most radiant, beautiful versions for long lasting beauty in sort of like a priestess style purification approach. <laughs> by really having the intention of purifying our environment as much as possible and modulating it to our benefit. That's what biohacking is. Biohacking is defined by the art and science of modulating our environment to support our biology. And that includes looking at your biomarkers. So doing gut testing, doing blood and saliva testing to see what actually is going on with your body's expression of your DNA, which is the study of epigenetics. So say for example, you have different things in your family history of different concerns. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have that in your cards. You have the ability to modulate your environment and support your cells to 
you know, maybe not have that genetic expression take hold and impact your heart health or your breast health or, you know, other organs in your body. Uh, Also for your mind, your brain, if you have family members that say have Alzheimer's or dementia, there's things that we can do to support ourselves, but you really need to know how to do that. And that's through looking at your different biomarkers and testing instead of guessing the foods that you're eating and also what your hormones are up to, your cortisol, your everything, everything, right? Your blood sugar levels, like what's your, what's your glucose fasting, right? What's your lipid profile, all these things, what's your thyroid function? The more information we can get on our biomarkers and how our DNA are expressing, we can make subtle shifts to then allow our DNA to express in a healthier way. And this is what the study of epigenetics blended with looking at your biomarkers does. And my last paper I wrote, hey, Elizabeth, my last paper I wrote on nutrition and the skin is this very concept of aesthetic nutrition to give a more aesthetic look to us. And that's what's really cool about this day and age is we have these technologies available. And I have a lot of these test kits on my biohacking page over at the school of radiance.com. Check those out. There's some links to help you out. The other thing I want to mention is the concept of, so you're doing that work, you've done your, your labs, you see what your biomarkers are telling you, but then you want to maybe do things to support your cells further. And that can include things like NAD or NMN to act as a precursor so that your mitochondria can make more ATP because our energy levels fall because our NAD levels fall and they can decrease NAD production by 65% in uh, men and women ages 35 to 70. So that's pretty significant. And that's an easy thing that we can do something about is uh, utilizing compounds like NAD and NMN. It's really easy to take these in like a pill format and you just take it every day. And uh, you should notice a little bit more energy in that regard. But before doing anything like that, it's wise to reduce the overall toxins in your environment. And I didn't really look at radiance in this way until I experienced it for myself, starting with doing some biohacking, which I started in about 2016 with air purifiers, red light therapy, cold plunging, cold plunging and saunaing or taking a really hot bath stimulates something called hormesis and autophagy which then helps to clear out our senescent cells, which are our zombie cells or like the leaves on a tree that need to go that are taking the resources from that tree, creating the beautiful leaves and plants that it, and fruits rather that it wants to make. So that's why putting our bodies in just a little bit of stress, controlled stress is really good to stimulate that pathway of autophagy. And so after I did parasite cleansing, for about three months. Then I did a long fast in the desert at altitude. This was about 7,000 feet up to 8,000 feet in altitude for about five, six or seven days in nature. And after that fast, like everything about me changed. And there's actually quite a bit of research in the fasting space that points to the impact of doing longer fasts once a year for incre- for improving your biomarkers for say heart health and your immune system and the ability for your body to you know have a decreased likelihood of cancer there's a lot of research on the benefits of fasting and a long fast in particular which is different from intermittent fasting depending on where you are in your cycle you might not want to do that so when it comes to helping our cells out You simply need to get really dialed in and tuned in to what makes you feel good, what energizes you and actually going to different events and social engagements might energize you more than you think going, you know, staying home and taking that nap might be that deep rooted desire to, you know, not share your light and get out there could actually be something as simple as your attachment style, which is not simple. But it also could be, you know, parasites in your central nervous system impacting your thought. Actually, that's a thing. Now, 
there's a lot of things that I just mentioned. Let me know in the chat any questions or comments that are coming up because we did a little bit of a deep dive on the concept of our cells. So we want to eat the right foods. We want to purify our environment. And then we also want to support it with things like antioxidants, omegas, collagen, and other types of nutrients to support our cells. And the funny thing that I've noticed with myself from a nutrition standpoint is I've been doing pretty heavily, you know, I don't do anything in extreme. That's another thing about radiance. You don't want to be too extreme with anything. You want to be balanced and you want to be grounded because as soon as you start to go too extreme and dogmatic on the carnivore diet, then there isn't that softness to that. That is a big component of radiance. And and how you eat and how you live can be in flux and be flexible. And that's also an element that I've heard people describe radiance as. So it's not about being rigid. It's about being able to have a different shifted opinion on something. You know, we've all seen that over the last couple of years and how just so many people got divided. And that wasn't really good for anybody, anybody's mental health, right? So then when you when you do this work it just allows your brain to function better and your brain and your skin are more connected than you might realize our skin and brain actually come from the same cell line when we are you know a baby and when we're when we're formed and all that and i didn't know that until one of my clients he's a neurologist he actually pointed that out that when there's plaques on the skin like seborrheic keratosis, for example, they're kind of like these rough, raised brown areas that you can either laser off or liquid nitrogen, things like that. But if there's plaques on the skin, there's very likely plaques on the brain. If there's bumps and redness and irritation on the skin, there's very likely that type of same irritation on your organs and your tissues that you can't see. So the skin and desiring to have healthy skin isn't vain. Sure, if someone wants to look like Kim K and every other celebrity on social media, there's something to be said for that. There's also body dysmorphia. That is a psychological condition that impacts a lot of people, especially on these days with the comparison or the, the FOMO, the fear of missing out thing that happens with social media. You know, we're told to present this way and do these things when actually I think it's better just to do what makes you feel better, what energizes you. What does that look like? A key component of radiance is doing things that light you up and bring you joy. So whether that's painting or for me playing my guitar and getting out in nature and being grounded and looking at the ocean and the sunshine and seeing animals. So speaking of animals, I was driving the other day and I kid you not, there was a bald eagle that was about... 15, 20 feet above my vehicle. I could actually see it through my sunroof and it followed me for probably about 30 seconds down this road. It was just incredible. So I love to see animals, love to go to the beach and see all the fun little critters and things like that. So those are examples of things that energize me and make me feel really good. And it might be different for you. It could be, you know, making that yummy sourdough bread or baking things for you and your family. Sylvia says, this is all awesome info. Thank you with a heart emoji and being radiant, being a good person, it really starts with also ourselves. What's your intention? So I mentioned the vanity piece. You could get all the rejuvenation in the world. And I've seen this happen. The busy bodies with the smart watches, they show up to the clinic with their coffee and, you know, they just had to drop their kids off and do this and do that. And they wear this busyness with the badge of honor. And then they show up for rejuvenation, but they're not doing any home care. They're not doing any of the biohacking things. They're not looking at their cells. They're just looking at the way that they look in the mirror and wanting to just show up to someone every one to three months to make their skin beautiful. That isn't the approach I recommend taking. I recommend taking a more heart-centered approach. Our hearts are really potent. Our hearts actually emit a torus field, which extends about six feet away from us. So I'm curious if, you know, when we were told to stand six feet apart, if there was something to that. I just, I, th I think about things differently and that's 
kind of what a lot of you have told me is that you appreciate the way that I think about things. And I don't just think about things at face value. I consider, now what are some of the other reasons? And over the last couple of years, it was this connection piece that was for a lot of us really stripped away from us. And it really impacted a lot of people especially from a mental health perspective, because with our hearts, we emit this beautiful Taurus field. That's why when you're around radiant people, you feel so good about them. They just have this energy. And then I can think of a couple examples where I met with individuals and was doing a consult. And I basically had to end that consult about 20, 30 minutes in because there was just something really off with their energy. And there is something called energy vampires, um, you know, people with narcissistic tendencies, they love to pull on the energy of other individuals to feed their own supply. And that's something as intuitive empaths is important for us to be aware of and recognize and have really good boundaries around our energies and have that in and out conversation style where the other individual is none the wiser that you just wanted to get out of that conversation in room with them immediately, but you don't leave that impression based on the gestures and the word choices and the questions that you're raising and having dialogue, and then you make your exit. Wendy, where can I learn more about the aura? Sylvia says, our amazing aura, our etheric body. Let me put a more quantifiable research-based spin on what the aura is. Dr. Beverly Rubick, R-U-B-I-K, you may have heard me mention her before, and I reference her in my oxidative stress status study, because in my opinion, I've been following her since about 2016, 2017. She's one of the pioneers in researching electric fields on our bodies. And our hearts, as I mentioned before, gives off this Taurus field. It's basically like this donut of energy. Now the earth has this as well. And the human biofield, I would say, is a good term to use for the aura. Because again, we want to stay grounded in all these things. We don't want to, you know, end up with a million crystals around us and, you know, talking to the, this person over here that's not even there. We want to stay really grounded. You know, faith and family are first and foremost. Protecting your heart and leading and living from the heart are really important. So the human biofield, there's actually lots of different things that you can do to support the human biofield. And there's actually technology, and I have a piece of this technology, that can actually give a visualization of your human biofield, the quality of it, the thickness of it, the density of it. And they're actually in this specific test, it's called the BioWell, it comes from Europe, of course. Europeans are way way ahead of North Americans in regard to something called energy medicine. The body's energetic properties are really potent to have an awareness on, especially from our cells, right? We're not going to have great energy if our mitochondria is not functioning. If you're eating the wrong foods, if you're around a huge amount of electric fields, it's actually going to mess up with mess with your heart center and our hearts are highly electromagnetic. Actually, there's more electromagnetic connections and firing and activity in our brain than our heart. But the, the heart is, you know, we think of the heart as like our love center, our kindness center, leading from the heart. But, but we have to protect our heart in more ways than one. And also electric fields and wireless cellular radiation can actually make our blood cells, our red blood cells stick together. And then you don't get good blood flow throughout your body. Five minutes on your phone, we see this through live blood cell analysis under the microscope. And that's showing signs of radiation versus spending 30, 40 minutes grounding outside and your red blood cells, they look like donuts again. They're flowing freely, carrying oxygen and nutrients and also taking away toxins to get filtered through your liver and kidneys. So everything is connected. You're probably seeing this now. But one of the things I wanted to really mention about the heart is if you're looking to be your most beautiful, radiant version, being of service in whatever that might mean for you is actually going to also lead to a high degree of satisfaction with your life and what you do and your impact, right? 
if you're considering yourselves, yourself, what are you doing to make this world a better place? Part of what I do and to be of service is to help others learn about the various different ways and strategies to cultivate this so that they're better parents, they're better partners, they're better siblings, they're better colleagues and better friends. Because the more of us that operate this way, the more of an impact we're going to have. We're going to have, have made that person brighter. And then what happens is people start to ask you what you're doing. They're going to start to say things like, oh, you just, you know, you seem so calm lately. You seem like you're at peace. Your skin looks brighter. Your skin has this glow. Gosh, your, your hair looks fantastic. It's growing so long. Look at your nails, your body composition. You look fit. You look lean. What are you doing? People are going to start to ask you what you're doing. And this is your cue to share one thing with them that you're doing. One thing that you've learned, say, from today's live class here. But don't tell them all the things because then it's going to turn into the fire hose situation. And that's really important for protecting your energy and radiance. It's not your job to preach from the mountaintops, all the different things to do. You, you leave that to someone like myself, again, about one to 2% of people online who are actually consuming content are creators. The rest of the people online who are listening to things are just listening to things, but they're not actually contributing to that content. So teaching isn't for everybody. Research isn't for everybody. One thing I do want to point out is that when you start to learn about different things, I want you to, again, have this in and out strategy. You go down the rabbit hole, you learn about something, and then you come back out. So many people, when they go to extreme and they learn about something like the carnivore diet, for example, or nutrition, or anything, mitochondria, biohacking, anything and everything, politics, they go a little bit too deep in the rabbit hole and they get sucked into that vortex. You want to just kind of go in and come out. Not everybody has that capacity. And for myself as a researcher, and I had this pointed out to me many years ago, that I have the ability to go in, get the information I need, come out, and then disseminate the information that's most related to ourselves looking our best and feeling our best and becoming more radiant. Sylvia says, totally agree. We are all connected. This is really deep stuff. And for those of you tuning in, they're like, ah, I just want the skin tips. You know, what products to use? What laser is going to take care of brown spots and red spots? You know, what can I do to lift my face and reduce facial sagging? It starts with your cells, yourself, your home care of your skin care, your dermal rolling, skin cycling with peels and retinols. And then maybe doing some things in the clinic, but really getting your health on point first or while you're on the journey of looking after the largest organ of your body with your skincare and your practices. So this concept of hermesis and autophagy, it's this controlled discomfort with hot and cold. It's kind of like with the rejuvenation side of things. With dermal rolling and sometimes some lasers, it creates this controlled injury, which then tells your fibroblasts to make more elastin and collagen. Or if you're dealing with pigmentation and melasma, it helps to suppress that overproduction of melanin from the melanocytes. Microneedling and dermal rolling works on both of that. And I, of course, teach you how to do that from the comfort of your own home in my expert seasonal tutorials, where in seven weeks, I'm going to teach you how to become a skin pro. And I know many of you here have had a one-on-one -on -one and joined my tutorials. And there are some new names and faces here, but I, I would say that, uh, you know, there, there's some, there's some new faces here, but, but a lot of you here, you know, that you've been connecting with and, and following what I talk about in the school of radiance podcast, working with me one-on-one -on -one, skin tutorials, membership, like, you know, the deep dive stuff. So now the question is what's the specific strategy to become your most radiant version? How do we get from where we are today to where we want to be when we, what I want you to do actually is just close your eyes and I want you to see yourself a year from now. We're thinking of you, you're thinking of yourself a year from now and you have a magic wand and where you want to be in a year from now with the way that you look, your body composition, your energy, your relationships, your finances, 
obviously your health. If you had a magic wand and you could get that in a year from now, we're thinking a year ahead of your best version, most radiant version forward. What does that look like? How does that feel? And what are you hearing others say to you about you? Think about that and just hold on to that. Where you are today and then in a year from now, if you had a magic wand and you could be your most beautiful radiant version, how would that change your life? What are you saying about yourself? What are you hearing other people saying? What are you doing in your life? Are you having more fun? Do you feel more peace and joy? Do you feel like you can speak coherent sentences because you don't have brain fog anymore? Do you see your skin being clear? Do you see any hair loss you might've had over the last little while coming back and your hair being fuller? And just feeling like you're caring for your body in the most beautiful way that you can. And you're in your body. You're enjoying your body. Your relationships have improved. Your communication's improved. You're feeling like you're really connecting with your partner and with your kids and your siblings and your friends and your colleagues. You're going from task A to task B with more grace and ease, getting the outcomes that you desire with health, finances, fitness, all of that, with relationships, you have that. This version of you in a year from now, you have a magic wand and you have it. How does that make you feel? And it's okay if you're getting a little emotional, you might have a little tear. I mean, these are big shifts. That's okay. And just really feel that. How being in that different state, you've shifted. You're more radiant. You look better. You feel better. You're enjoying life more. You're not just taking a nap when you're tired. You're actually getting out, working out, being in nature, doing things that you love, being of service. Your faith in your family's on point. Now, how does that feel? Now, let me know, for those of you who are live, what you felt. And those of you who are listening to this in the replay, what are some of the things that you felt? What kind of emotions did you feel? Can you even verbalize those emotions? Do you know how to? What was that like for you? Because that possibility in a year from now is entirely possible. But what happens if you don't get that? What happens if you don't experience that and you say, say st are stuck where you are live in the rat race on autopilot you're not getting the health the wealth the relationships the opportunities that you know are available to you but you're just not getting it you're kind of stuck now what i really want to hear is that that is not an option. Delilah says, feels out of reach. A lot of people feel this. Okay, here we go. Sylvia, it feels totally awesome. This is very heart opening. It's a very radiant feeling. Yeah, being from the heart and being in that energy, this, I mean, this is possible. I live it, breathe it, do it every day. And, you know, I get to teach how to, the, the strategies, the step-by-step -step process on how to do it, but it's not going to be an overnight thing. It's learning about, again, what your personality archetype is, what your attachment style is, what are your biomarkers, 
working on your communication strategies, learning about etiquette, learning how to protect your energy. There's so much more. (laughs) So there's what I've really found is that there is a specific strategy for enhancing your radiance because I've observed it for over 10 years and I finally figured out how to teach it. And then I did it myself. Well, I did it myself first. It's like, holy cow, like I've gone through a lot and I was able to navigate life with grace and ease and not lose any hair in the process. So, you know, this, this stuff is not only for helping you live your best life, but it's also to help you navigate and negotiate. Negotiation is also in there too. Really slick communication strategies to get what you want, but communicating in a loving way, but yet still being clear and having power behind your words to negotiate exactly what feels in the highest for you. Obviously, that's not going to be detrimental to the other party or anything like that. We don't want to be operating that way. So Sylvia says, feels totally awesome. She went there. She could feel that. And then Delilah says, feels a little bit out of reach. But I'm sure you wanted to feel that. I'm sure you really wanted to feel that. Let me know in the, in the chat, Delilah. You know, this is a really interesting exercise because... Becoming our best versions, looking great, feeling fantastic. It's not for everybody, right? Some people are going to take take that, what we call the slow path, piecemealing. They listen to this podcast. They listen to that podcast. They're trying to piece all this together, but some of the information they hear along the way is actually distracting them from what their actual goal is, which is to look and feel your best and with the, with the intention of being of utmost integrity too. Really important. There is a difference with improving your biomarkers, but then also just improving your whole level of radiance and how you look. You can have great biomarkers, but if you don't know how to communicate and you don't really understand yourself, that's that's the missing piece is the, that strategy. And basically radiance is this electromagnetic projection of all of your other body systems, body, mind, spirit, and energy. And then there's other pieces too. Ayurveda says that the radiant body is the 10th body. It's the electromagnetic projection you put in the world. So when we talked about the heart and the torus field around that, that's that projection that's going out there. And it can be really powerful and you can definitely use it to your advantage with good intention. And, you know, can push away people you don't want to connect with or engage with or push away opportunities and situations that aren't in your highest. But you can also utilize it to call the right people in, make friends, have relationships. You can use that. You can use it pretty. It's pretty great. Okay. Have some comments here. Sylvia, change can be hard in letting go of the past, forgiving others and ourselves. The cells keep score. I just want to add here. So if you have difficulty forgiving yourselves and others, you're holding on to anger, guilt, and shame, which are the lowest frequencies. The highest frequency is obviously enlightenment. And then there's peace, love, and joy. And this is, you can just look this up, a frequency image, right? I actually have it as my background on my phone. Because if I'm ever feeling, you know, fear, grief, apathy, guilt, shame, those are really low vibrations. That is not good for you because our energy and the space between actually makes up 80% of our universe. So what's the quality of your space between is your space between filled with negative emotional states, negative thought forms that actually could be external because you don't know much about energy protection yet. Or are you in these more beautiful, positive emotional states of peace, love, joy, and reason? I mean, I don't know about you, but I haven't come across that enlightenment piece yet. (laughs) And uh, so I just wanted to add that, that it's, you really have to let go because your cells keep score and emotions keep score in those negative emotional states. Everything on this earth is a continuous state of evolving, refining, improving, adapting, enhancing, and changing. Yes. Great comment. Energy is neither created or destroyed. It's merely transformed. So if you are kind of stuck in that state of feeling stuck, if you're in those negative emotional states, 
you're going to kind of perpetuate that. You literally just have to pick yourself up out of those emotions and reprogram how you operate. The more you know about your operating system from your personality archetype, your attachment style, and lots of other things, I can just make that a lot easier. But yes, we're constantly in a state of evolution. So that's why I mentioned before that the way that you might look at your nutrition and your lifestyle, your political beliefs, all these, all these things, they can shift. They can shift because we're evolving and you should always be evolving. Otherwise you're stuck and you're going to get the same outcome over and over again. Delilah definitely want it. She's referring to radiance, of course, but it feels a little out of reach. Perhaps there's a worthiness component. All of you are worthy. If you don't feel worthy of being your best version, think about where that's coming from. That could go so far as to your childhood. And again, related to your attachment theory, not feeling worthy about to receive something is an example. And I'm just going to lovingly say this of you getting in your own way. You're all worthy. You know, we're, we were created to have a choice to be good or be evil, right? What are you going to choose? It is, you want to be your best, brightest, happiest, healthiest version. And it's available to everybody. You just have to learn how to do it. Wendy, the love the words, feels hopeful, would like to take a bath in the language. Yes. Oh, that's so cool. Ooh, you really got into that feeling of what those words are. And it, it's just a, it's just a matter. This is kind of like the mindset component. That's part of the strategy of radiance is what's the mindset of beauty? What's the mindset of radiance? How do you stay in that and not waver even when life kind of gives you a little bit of a road bump, not a roadblock, but an obstacle? You will begin to learn how to overcome stressful situations, stressful people, through nervous system regulation and effective communication and conflict resolution. This is where negotiation and communication comes into play and being able to learn how to vocalize your emotions. Really key components here. So you can tell I've sort of tiptoed on a lot of the different pieces that are involved in being your most radiant version. What I'm going to do here is actually just leave a, this is going to be available for those of you who are catching the replay as well in the show notes, but I would love to meet you. And after listening to this particular episode, I want to meet you. If you're just like, oh my gosh, I need to know how to learn this. Number one, I want to hear from you. I want to hear sort of like what you're what what you're experiencing, what you need help with, and uh, we'll hop on a call. So here is the link for a call with me here. There's no charge. I want to connect with you, see how I can support you. For those of you who are live, um, this is a gift you can get on my calendar right away, book a time. And those of you catching the replay, it is in the show notes. And this um, type of call is not going to be available forever. <laughs> So let me know once you have booked that. And for those of you who are one-on-ones, you've done my tutorials, you haven't um, gone deeper yet, then this is where you want to go. Let's connect and I can give you some, uh, some tips to help you out. Sylvia, we all respond to others' feels. Radiance, high vibration, draw others and draws good things. Yeah. And then it can actually, um, there's some specific strategies to then deflect things that aren't going to be in your highest, whether that's people, places, or things or situations. And Sylvia, amazing synchronicity. Uh, tell me more about that. What, what's the synchronicity here? I mean, I obviously don't like to use the word amazing. I don't want you to be stuck in a maze because that's when you feel stuck with not moving forward and feeling unworthy you know being stuck in a, in a maze there's no growth in that you're like stuck in a maze so i don't use the word amazing uh sylvie says yes there are energy vampires yeah for those of you who tune in and and connect with me it's these these things that i don't hear anybody else talking about these things honestly i really don't and in this specific way which is why radiance and you learning how to become 
your own, basically master of your own radiance, getting to know yourself better so that you can navigate life as a beautiful radiant person. And I mean, you're going to age, of course, we're all going to age. We, we can compare our biological to chronological aging with your biomarkers all day long, but you know, death is the only inevitable in this life. I hate to be a Debbie Downer there. It's just, what are you doing with this life? Are you staying stuck? Are you just continuing to do the same things over and over again? Or are you making positive steps towards who you want to be in a year from now? How do you want to show up? How do you want to show up for yourself, for your family, for your loved ones? You know, how to kick button in your workplace. I think of beautiful Michelle. I've been working with her for a long time. And she switched from her corporate job to something much better. She was able to switch out of being in more of a masculine state with how she would connect with other men and being in a more feminine state. There's actually more power to that, ladies, for those of you listening, to not have to like match the guys in the macho-ness. There's actually more power to balancing that, that feminine and masculine dynamic and quality. And for the guys, too, to really be able to step into their leadership and authority role. Uh, is really beautiful too, because what that does for women is it just is like honey on the woman's nervous system. But for you as a woman in a relationship, you're also not going to feel that if you are stuck in your masculine also. So there definitely is the masculine feminine dynamic that's at play when we are a most radiant version, because you're not going to be your most beautiful radiant version if you are again, imbalanced in those qualities. And women are not meant to work like men. I'm just going to put it out there. We kind of get praised in modern society to do it at the expense of your adrenal function, at the expense of your health, of your mental health, and just the way that you feel. And uh, we have Sylvia says, amazing in the way that things you are focused on, your passions, your needs, when you're vibrating in a radiant high vibration and the universe delivers all kinds of beautiful things. Yeah. So this also is getting into the hero's journey, right? We think of the Jedi's and we'll wrap up here, but we'll wrap up on the hero's journey. When we go through an event in our life, there is like, think of Luke Skywalker, for example, and Luke Skywalker, you know, there's this big thing that was happening and, and he couldn't do it himself. He had to learn a bunch of stuff. He had to train to become a Jedi. He met, I think it was Obi-Wan Kenobi and Yoda, who then were his mentors. In the hero's journey, there's the struggle, then there's the mentors, there's overcoming the obstacle, and then there's the reward. And you can think about that with radiance and just living your best life, looking and feeling your best. But especially on the topic of radiance, you have to learn different things, but it's going to take you a lot longer if you're kind of trying to do it by yourself and picking up information from here or there, as opposed to finding a mentor that really gets what you desire to shift. And then you get the reward. So for me, the reward was more mental clarity, balanced hormones, better body composition, fuller hair, clearer skin, nails that grow like weeds that never break and having more friends, enjoying life and having success and all these things. So um, that's, that's kind of like how my hero's journey reward happened and what that looks like for me. Elizabeth, how do you work without masculine? It's not about being with or without, it's about being in balance. So there's different elements of our lives in different situations where we do have to turn up the masculine when I'm four by fouring and leading an excursion and I gotta you know be in that masculine mindset when I'm on the trails and hiking some of the most treacherous trails in the Pacific Northwest that require the highest amounts of rescues I'm in my masculine at that point because I'm leading but it's really great when I get to shift into my feminine and then just relax you know be that princess passenger <laughs> But you don't have to worry about those things because you can then trust the masculine that you're with to be able to lead so that you don't have to wear the pants. So there's a huge dynamic, which is massive in relationships and successful marriages. 
Sylvia, exactly. Being of service to other, being kind and loving. Yes. Learning how to communicate in a kind and loving way, even if you don't really want to be there. And, you know, someone's off the deep end. They're just personality their energy is just super off how can you still continue to leave a positive impression that's where communication and negotiation the in and out conversation strategy so go ahead book that personalized radiance consultation let's connect happy to answer some questions some things that you thought were interesting and uh, we'll go from there we women run lots of testosterone. It's a balance. Yeah, you, I mean, with your hormones, right? You got to keep that progesterone, estrogen, testosterone balance. If you're out of balance, you're going to be out of balance. And then there's all this whole cascade of other things like accelerated aging and diseases and all that, which, by the way, this is not medical advice, educational information only. If you think you have a medical condition, you must seek the guidance of a licensed physician. All right, that's a wrap, everybody. Love you all so much. Be sure to book that personalized radiance consultation. That link is in the chat. It's also in the show notes of this. And yeah, if, if you're kind of like, okay, this radiance thing, I've been hearing a little bit about it. I'm ready to uh, not keep spinning my wheels and just um, would love to just get to where I can see myself being in a year and getting over that obstacle of feeling unworthy. Thanks to Lila for sharing that. I appreciate that. I'm here to help you and answer some questions you have. Sarah, thank you so much. So lovely to be here. You're very welcome. All right, you all light my world up. I'm showing up for you. Recording these with no audience is a little tricky. I love to kind of get the read on the room and see what you're resonating with and where to go and where to go deeper and all of that. So continue to stay tuned here on the School of Radiance podcast and you know, book your one-on-one, -on -one, join my skincare tutorials membership. Definitely just book that um, uh, Radiance consultation, 15-minute meet and greet. Love to meet you. Um, and also just make sure that uh, I suss out that you have that true intention and then uh, give you some tips to help you out. I'm here to support you. So share this episode with a friend or family member that you think could also benefit from this that might be really struggling right now because we need community. We all need community. So when I show up for these these sessions here with you all, I, I, you know, get a lot out of connecting with each and every one of you too. So thank you. Thanks for taking the time here. All right. Love you all so much. See you again right here on the School of Radiance podcast. <laughs>